We're gonna go from this to this. Yeah. See my hand shaking? Mog, mog. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. You wanna do my thumbnail? Now a common problem with these frosted glass doors that are coming to lots of different RVs is that the frosting that's on the back side of the glass comes off from stuff rubbing around while you're traveling down the road and it creates these terrible little spots in the frosting right here and it actually just peels off. So we really wanna get rid of this glass and put something different. Now what we decided to do, instead of glass, we're gonna use metal so we have a lot more acreage for Alice to put her magnet collection on these three doors. Some of the products and tools that we use in this project. Okay, now to get the window out of this frame, it's actually pretty easy in this design. They just have put silicone around the edges, so I just need to cut the silicone along the edge and then pop the window out. I'm gonna slide the knife down on each edge. Cutting all the way to the wood. I'm using a high quality Stanley utility knife with a fresh blade. I'm going to go around the window twice, making sure I've released all of the silicone from the frame. Okay, I cut through on all the sides, so I should be able to just push it out now. And boom! Test one of our metal sheets here. Make sure we're gonna fit in there good. And that fits perfect. Look at that. With the glass out, it's easy to get accurate measurements, both in the height and the width, to make sure that you get a tight fit of the steel in the frame. So here we are at Lowe's and here is where I got the sheet steel, 22 gauge, two foot by four foot. I have the dimensions marked out on this metal right here. I got 39 millimeters wide and I got 20 inches uh, long. Don't ask me why I've got me metric and standard mixed. But anyway, so I got that marked off. I'm going to use my cutter right here to, to cut it. It actually goes through a lot of these blades, so I'm going to try to be good about cutting this. So. I tried to use my tin snips instead of uh, using a saw, but the problem was it was hard to get through a very long piece of material without bending it and deforming the metal, metal bunch, and I wanted it to stay really flat. I used these metal cutting three inch blades, but they wear out really quickly and I only got about two cuts per each blade before I had to change it. I went through six saw blades during this project, so I invested in a diamond cutoff saw blade for my next project. The important thing when working with a saw like this on steel, it's going to throw a lot of sparks to so make sure you protect your eyes. The other thing is to move really slowly and when I, every once in a while I stop and back up a little bit to reduce the sparks so that I can see where I'm going and then adjust uh, where I'm going on the line. And I just cut right down my uh, marker line. I use these quick adjustable clamps that I've had for over 20 years to hold down the material uh, firmly while I cut it. It's very handy to keep these in the RV and I use them for projects all the time. Having very accurate cuts is the most important thing with this project. Here you can see I'm moving very slowly through the material, being very careful to stay in the line. Every once in a while I slow down and reduce the sparks again to make sure I'm staying on line. Okay, so here I have my cut piece of metal. On the back side I have the glass and they are virtually exactly the same dimensions so that the metal should fit perfectly right inside the same space as the glass. So I gotta cut one more of these and then we can work on to cleaning them and getting them covered. I'm gonna be using my measuring tape to put the measurements down on the steel and then I'm gonna use a, a long uh, ruler with a straight edge to make my marks. I wanna make sure that these lines are nice and straight so that when my saw comes along, I make a nice straight cut. Got my lines marked out and we're gonna cut the long end first. I 
As I cut the second uh, piece of metal here, you can see as I cut, I stopped quite a bit. And I did get off line here for a little bit and I quickly adjusted back to the line. As long as you catch it before you get too far off, it should make enough of a difference. Um, the frame of the uh, door itself will be able to hide uh, small mistakes. The saw is getting a little little there, so we're going to have to try to get through this. As I cut, you can see the blade gets smaller and smaller to the point where it won't even make contact with the steel and I have to change blades. Yeah, I've kind of burned that one out. Okay, I switched to an actual Sawmax blade. The three inch Sawmax did okay here, but the Dremel Ultra Saw with four inch blade would have been a much better choice. Let's see how the two sheets compare. Well, they're like exact. It's perfect. When I bought the metal sheet from Lowe's, it came with this oily substance that was on it to keep it from rusting. I had to clean them really well. Some of them I was going to paint and some I was going to put on the plastic film. Either way, they had to be very, very clean to be able to accept the paint or the uh, self-stick adhesive. Then I just dry them off with some paper towel and inspect them to make sure they got very clean. I am cleaning this off with alcohol to make sure that the surface is really clean. I'm using 91% alcohol, which is really all I use for stuff like this. The sheet that I painted, I cleaned really well and used a light sandpaper, like a 220. So you see, you can see it's, it's getting oils and stuff. Even though I washed it with, with soap and water. One thing I would do differently is I would have taken some sandpaper and soften up the edges of the steel uh, before I cleaned and painted it. Now we're going to figure out how we're going to lay this on here. What they're saying is, you know I don't like to do this, i got to read the instructions. I prepare the whiteboard self-adhesive material by cutting it to the approximate shape with about two inches of overlap on each end. I had to get Alice's help to put the self-adhesive down. Um, she had better fingernails than me. And then once we got it peeled back, I held the sticky part and she helped me position it onto the steel and get it started. We had to make sure that everything was still going to line up well when we rolled it out. But after we got it stuck, Alice could start uh, using the squeegee that came with it to uh, press out all the air bubbles. I lifted the sheet up to keep it from sticking down to the steel as Alice moved forward with the squeegee and slowly pushed the bubbles out. As she squeezed it down, I allowed a little bit more material to get stuck to the steel. This is the only way to make sure that you don't get air bubbles. If a couple of bubbles do get trapped, I had to lift it back up again, peel it off of the steel, and allow Alice to push it back down again, squeezing the bubbles out. It's really important to be patient when uh, squeegeeing down the material and getting the air bubbles out. If you don't and you get an air bubble, you have to peel it back up again and push it back over. The other thing can happen is if you don't clean it well, um, you'll get a little speck of dirt in there and it'll show up really well on the plastic. So you have to find some way to uh, peel it back and pull out the little piece of dirt or dust uh, and then proceed forward. The little squeegee that came with the kit has a soft and a hard side. Uh, Alice pretty much used the soft side the entire time. Didn't really find any benefit of using the hard edge uh, instead. Just take your time and finish pushing it all the way to the edge of the plate. Make sure you've really pressed down where the edge of the steel meets the plastic to make sure it is firmly attached to the steel before you start trimming. Now I just take a, an X-Acto blade here and just carefully uh, trim off the edge. It actually comes off pretty easily. You don't have to use an X-Acto. You can use the same utility knife uh, you used earlier on the uh, cutting the silicone out. So this is the uh, dry marker material that's, that's plastic. This is the paint. So this is just paint that I got and sprayed it and then put a, a clear lacquer coat. But you can see how much more yellow it is. It's going to be interesting when we try to put that over this. And on the back side, this is just shelf paper, like regular 
uh, shelf paper you get from Lowe's that you put in your cabinets or something like that. It's very thin. You can actually see through to the metal. So we didn't like that. So this is why we got this material. White. This would be the thumbnail right here, baby. Eggshell. Eggshell. Pure white. Snow white. Here are the three options we had compared to the frosted glass. Okay. okay, this is like the whiteboard material. This is their original glass. And this is just the plain steel. I still think I do like the bright white so far. Okay, now which one do you like better? This is the whiteboard. It's like a plastic covering. This is a white paint. It's just like a Rust-Oleum with, uh, I sanded it and then put a clear coat on top of it. And this is just a, the plain metal. I actually think I like this one better. It's just painted, but the problem with that is that it takes two cans of paint, a can of white and a can of clear to do this. And it's a lot more work and breathing fumes and all that kind of stuff. This one was so much easier just to, you know, stick down the uh, marker board um, plastic stuff. Okay, we're trying it with some different lighting conditions. If you turn some of the lights off, it uses the natural light. And it, you don't really see a big contrast between this one and this one. I still prefer the painted one, but the problem with the paint, I think that it will smudge after a while and discolor. And I think this white plastic stuff should last forever. The cool thing is this is a whiteboard. So you can put little notes about each place. Like I might say, <laughs> but maybe we're just I liked Mammoth K. What are you talking about? When you see the footage, you'll know what I'm talking about. But maybe it's just justifying because this took so little time compared to the painted ones. But then again, we are worried this will get scratched up. And frankly, if this gets messed up, we just peel it off and put it on another layer. We can see what it looks like in the frame before I put the uh metal in. Okay, now I'm going to put the fully covered plates in. We've got our good side out. I'm just going to sit it in there. And what I'm going to do to hold it in to make sure it goes in all the way, I'm going to try to use staples to make sure that it stays in. I can pull the staples out later. So what I'm going to do is basically go like this. And that actually worked pretty good. I'll do one down here. There you go. And here. I used six staples to hold the panel in place while I was preparing it for the silicone. But I ended up leaving the staples in just some extra strength to hold the metal against the frame. You can see the staples. They don't look pretty, but they're not bad. Okay, so now that I got the staples in, it's held, I think it's held nice and tight against the inside edge here. The original windows were held in place with a clear silicone cock. So I'm just putting the new metal plates back in with silicone cock again over the staples. I use a high quality cock gun with GE high quality 100% silicone cock. This way it's nice and strong and will last forever. I lay down about a quarter inch bead of cock all the way from end to end. Then I just take my finger and wipe it so it's nice and clean. If you got something like a hiker pen that doesn't have a magnet on it, first of all, you take it and flatten it out, get it nice and flat, flip it over, take your magnet, put a small blob of this is E6000 glue. It's like a rubbery type of glue. Put that on there. Take your magnet. Stick it in the middle. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you think of this DIY project or on our Instagram or Facebook. And please subscribe and check out our other DIY projects. Remember, downsizing does make sense.